One of the biggest reasons why people get math problems wrong is that they don't show all their work. So when they're doing a problem, effectively they uh, skip steps. So let's take a look at this problem and we wanna do it without the aid of a calculator. So the question is brackets, parentheses, five minus one minus two minus three and parentheses minus five times two in parentheses brackets divided by parentheses one minus four. Okay, so once again, you don't want to use your calculator, but uh, what I'm gonna show you here in a second is all my steps to get this problem right. So I really want you to focus on getting a piece of paper out and writing out each specific step because that's the only way to do mathematics, right? You can't do a problem like this with only a few steps and then have a lot of confidence that it will be right. Okay, now before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John. I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Make sure to show all your steps and let's see how well you actually know how to do basic mathematics. Okay, now before I show you my steps to solve this problem, let's uh, quickly review some big picture math concepts that you need to understand in order to do this problem right. So the first thing that you need to understand is the proper order of operations. So you can follow the proper order of operations if you understand this acronym right here called PEMDAS. So we have P-E-M-D-A-S. I'll talk about uh, PEMDAS more in just one second. But uh, the other things that you need to understand in order to solve this problem, you certainly need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers, right? So got to understand basic numeric operations, and then you need to know a thing or two about positive and negative numbers and how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. Okay, so let's talk about PEMDAS here real quick. So this tells us the proper order of operations to do a math problem. In other words, when we have a math problem with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or other operations, we have to do the problem in the correct order or we will get it wrong. So the way PEMDAS uh, works is the following. Okay, so we're gonna kind of scan our problem and we're gonna look from left to right. Do we have any parentheses? Okay, so we're looking at this PEMDAS and we start with this P right here. So do we have any grouping symbols or parentheses? Now, of course, our problem does. And the way this works is we have to start with the innermost parentheses. Now the P uh, parentheses are, it's really uh, means grouping symbols. Okay, so let me repeat that again. P stands for grouping symbols, and grouping symbols in mathematics are parentheses and brackets and you know, even these type of squiggly brackets like this. Okay, so these are grouping symbols. Now, the way uh, this works is if you have parentheses inside of other parentheses or brackets, you start with the innermost parentheses. So you can see here, why I'm underlining these parentheses inside of these brackets. Okay, so I'll kind of get into this more in just one second, but uh, let's just quickly review the rest of PEMDAS. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is any powers. So E stands for exponents, but if you have a power like two to the third power, this little three up here is an exponent. The two is a base. So if you have any powers, you're gonna do those next. Now the next thing that you're gonna do is any multiplication and division, and you're gonna do any multiplication from uh, that you see in your problem from left to right, and then finally you'll do any addition and subtraction that you have from left to right. Okay, so if you understand the order of operations and how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers, and of course, how to work with positive and negative numbers, well, then you have all the math skills to solve this problem. Now, if you're not quite sure how to work with, uh, let's say, for example, positive and negative numbers, or maybe you need more practice, practice with the order of operations, I'll give you uh, some suggestions on how you can improve your basic math skills at the end of this video. 
But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem. And we want to keep uh, PEMDAS in mind as we work the problem. So the first thing that we need to do is any parentheses. So you can see here we have parentheses right here. And we also have parentheses right here inside of these uh, bigger brackets or these outer brackets. So we have to kind of start right here and right here. And then outside of these brackets, we have these sets of parentheses right here. So I could do this as well in terms of taking uh, one step in this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and go right here. We have 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. So that's going to be equal to 5 minus 6. Now, if you don't see how I got 5 minus 6, a good way to deal with subtraction problems is to turn them into plus negative situations. So in other words, I can think of this problem as 5 plus a negative 1 plus a negative 2 plus a negative 3 and a negative 1 plus a negative 2 plus a negative 3 is a negative 6. So we can have this written as 5 minus 6 or 5 plus a negative 6. Okay, so we'll get back to this in just one second, but uh, let's go ahead and continue to clean up these parentheses. So over here, I have 5 times 2, which of course is 10. And then over here, I have uh, 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Again, you can think of these uh, subtraction problems as plus negative. So this is the same thing as 1 plus a negative 4, which is negative 3. So here is our problem. And uh, again, I'm not taking too many steps at once, right? Everything is nice and controlled, and I can easily see my work. And uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind, especially for those of you uh, that are math students, is remember, your math teacher is going to be reading your work. So you want to tell a clear story. So let's go ahead and continue on. And again, if you don't understand any of uh, any of these things with positive and negative numbers, this uh, stuff is not that difficult. And I'll give you some tips on how to learn this at the end of this video. All right, so continuing on, we're not really uh, quite done with the parentheses part of this uh, problem. Okay, so we're still thinking about PEMDAS. So we have to uh, clean up this right here. Okay, so we have 5 plus negative 6. So this is going to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so I have negative 1 minus 10 in parentheses. Now, when you just have a number inside of parentheses, there's nothing more to do. All right, so the, in other words, we're not adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So you can technically drop those parentheses. So now we have negative 1 minus 10 inside of these brackets, which, are, of course, is part of the P in PEMDAS. So we'll get back to this in just one second. All right, so over here I have negative 3 in parentheses. Well, there's really nothing more to do, so I can just leave this like so, or just write it, uh, write a negative 3 without parentheses. Okay, so we're not done with the parentheses part because now we have to go over here. So negative 1 minus 10 is what? Well, that's negative 11. So this is the same thing as negative 1 plus a negative 10. And of course, a negative plus a negative is another negative, right? So negative 1 plus negative 10 is negative 11. So now we're down to this. We have negative 11 in brackets divided by negative 3 in parentheses. But uh, don't let these brackets and parentheses bother you because there's no more operations to do inside of these grouping symbols. So really what we have here is negative 11 divided by negative 3. Now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. 
So our final operation here is division. So let's uh, divide negative 11 by negative 3. Okay, so you can think of this as a fraction. So negative 11 divided by negative 3, we can write it this way. All right, so we have negative 11 divided by negative 3. Okay, so you want to kind of go from here to here. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So our final answer is a positive 11 over 3. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. So that is great. But uh, what's even better is if you wrote all your steps in a nice, clear, uh, controlled manner. Right now, you don't have to show uh, the steps that I took. Not exactly. Okay, so if your steps are a little bit different, that is perfectly fine. But uh, generally speaking, you should have these uh, main steps in your problem. Now, another thing about uh, solving math problems is the ice cream cone effect. <laughs> so what am I talking about? Well, typically, if you have a big math problem, you want to take one step at a time and kind of whittle it down like so. So this uh, includes problems like the one we just did, like uh, big numeric problems, and also like algebraic equations. All right. So when you stand back and look at your work, you kind of get this kind of ice cream cone shape, right? And you're telling a story until you get to your solution, right? So here is the problem. And then, of course, right here is the solution, okay? And somebody who's uh, reading your work wants to under understand the story of how you got to your conclusion. So make sure you tell that math story. All right, now, if you want to improve in basic mathematics or algebra or geometry, First of all, let me go ahead and give you some suggestions on how you can improve in basic mathematics. So the first thing is I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that uh, cover all things basic math. But uh, probably the best way to relearn basic mathematics is to kind of do it in a formal, structured way. So you want to check out these courses right here. So the first uh, is my Math Foundations course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. But uh, my Math Foundations course is kind of qu of a quick little uh, mini boot camp to review all things basic mathematics. So we're talking about fractions, decimals, how to add, subtract, multiply, numbers, et cetera, et cetera, percent, and a few other things as well. But uh, this course is not that long, and it's a great kind of refresher of basic mathematics. Now, if you want to learn basic math plus algebra and geometry, well, then you got to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? So this is a great course. Now, if you happen to be in like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, or maybe you are homeschooling or uh, preparing to take some sort of certification exam, I have like 150 plus math courses on my main math uh, website, right? So I have a huge catalog. So I'm pretty sure I can help you with all things mathematics. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.